What's up guys, Mikkel here, and Ripple just hired a brand new chief financial officer, and in this video, I want to talk about why I actually think it's a much bigger deal than many people are giving it credit for. I think this could indicate that a big event could be around the corner. I want to talk about exactly what that could be. Towards the end of the video though, I also want to talk about a very controversial topic in the XRP community, and that is whether or not Ripple building out rails for XRP to be used as a bridge currency is going to lead to increases in XRP's price, and just how successful has Ripple been in this initiative? Guys, make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see that. I want to show you a very interesting video. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. Thank you to everyone who likes the videos and is subscribed to the channel. These two things really help me out so much. Guys, we're also super close to 50k subscribers, so if you're someone who tunes in a lot and is not subscribed yet, please consider it. I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you guys have any good place to buy some XRP, make sure to check out my favorite exchange uphold down in the description of this video. With that said though, let's jump right into it and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So I want to start this video off and talk about Ripple's new hire for their chief financial officer. And this is pretty interesting because we saw Ripple's last chief financial officer leave about a couple months ago and we were kind of expecting this announcement to happen eventually. Now this guy used to work for Morgan Stanley as well as used to be a CFO for Sunrun when Sunrun went public and it's really making me think that they brought this guy in for Ripple's eventual IPO. What we know is that when you go IPO as a company, right, you want to have a management team there that plans to stay there for a while. You don't want to go IPO and then have a bunch of people on the board of directors and in your head management team stepping down. That's not typically a very good look for right when you go IPO. So typically, many private companies will really refresh their boards, refresh their key positions when they're about to do an IPO. What we know is that Ripple has speculated about an IPO for a while now, and something Brad Garlinghouse said just a couple weeks back that I think went way too far under the radar is how significant Coinbase's IPO was for their business. Brad Garlinghouse specifically stated that Coinbase going IPO did monumental things for their products. Essentially, many businesses in the United States saw Coinbase go IPO and saw it as a validation for Coinbase's business model. Now, technically, this is not how it's supposed to work, but it was the perception and the fact of what happened. What Ripple can do by going IPO is essentially validate their business model to all the big traditional financial institutions in the United States. Regardless of whether or not this should be the case, it's simply how it's working. When the traditional financial firms in the United States see a cryptocurrency company go public, they see it as a validation of that business and as an okay for them to get involved. Guys, if this is what it takes for Ripple to make major strides in the United States, if an IPO is going to be the thing to get big financial institutions more interested in their products, then I think Ripple has a real incentive to go IPO as fast as possible. One thing we do know though is that it's going to be hard for Ripple to go IPO during the Ripple SEC case, but with a change of administration possibly around the corner, things could really get shaken up and it looks like Ripple is getting ready for their IPO maybe regardless of the case even ends. Regardless, I thought this was really interesting information. It's nice to see Ripple hiring such heavy hitters for their board of directors and their key financial positions. I know a hire that has also gone heavily under the radar is Craig Phillips. He is also Morgan Stanley and BlackRock. Guys, one thing that has always blown my mind is how Ripple has able to attract this top tier talent. This guy right here used to literally control a third of the assets in the entire world in custody. Craig Phillips is a heavy hitter and I don't think it's any coincidence that he just ends up at Ripple. What these people understand is that we are heading into a new system. What these people understand is that the firms they used to work for are not going to be providing the technology as we set up new rails for the future financial systems. These guys know where the industry is headed. They understand which companies are going to win and which companies are going to get disrupted by the ripples of the world. Craig Phillips and all these other top tier talents like Rosie Rios are coming to Ripple because they understand Ripple is leading the way in building the new rails for our financial system. Super, super exciting stuff. It's so nice to see Ripple attracting this level of talent. Like I said before, guys, these people see where the industry is going before it actually happens. They're in the back rooms. They're landing the partnerships behind the scenes. These people know what's coming, and that's why they're setting up behind Ripple. I want to move on though now and quickly talk about a video that came onto my feed the other day and I thought it was absolutely excellent. A lot of people 
don't understand what Ripple is building behind the scenes. And a big reason for that is simply because Ripple is building institutional grade products. While all of these other cryptocurrency companies are running ads on X, advertising to different retail users and really gaining a lot of attention that way, Ripple doesn't have a real use case to do that. And the reason for that is, is because all of Ripple's advertising goes to big institutions. It goes to governments, it goes to countries. Ripple is advertising to people who are not me and you. And because of that, I think a lot of the time Times Ripple's efforts and Ripple's adoption, despite being immense and vast, really goes hidden behind the scenes because we don't see it with our own eyes. I want to play you this video though by digital perspective because I think it is a great breakdown of exactly how Ripple is really expanding in other countries, dramatic expansions that we can't see with our own eyes, but I think ultimately it leaks into the United States. Listen up to this. And there's this, which is ISDA, the International Swaps Derivatives Association, which if you remember, Ripple is joined and a partner of, but in this particular post, they're talking about India's economy is projected to be the world's third largest by 2030, uh, yet OTC derivatives market remains small. Recommendations focus on product development, market access, and ensuring safe growth aligned with global standards. Emphasis on harmonizing rules for interest rates and credit derivatives and enhancing market access through educational initiatives. So I brought this up because of ISDA. We know Ripple is a part of ISDA to help settle that two plus quadrillion dollars worth of derivatives. And they're speaking directly about India's economy and how it could be the third world's largest big economy by 2030. Well, then I wanted to go back and bring this up for anybody who's forgotten back in July of 2018, ladies and gentlemen, Ripple says it's likely to capture 50% of the market in India. This was Ashish Birla at the time, you can see right here, who was the vice president of the product at the time. We look early on, to, on at India, and he says, and we looked at 2 billion people, a huge market, and we decided, how do you get 2 billion people onto Ripple? Do we give the currency away to every Indian that's like 2 billion, just give it away? That's one idea. But then we realize that if you get the top three banks in India onto Ripple, you get 80% of the market share. This is why Ripple is an enterprise-facing company and not a consumer-facing one. And then we looked at, where's the future? And so we realized in the next five years, one billion people will become banked in India, but they'll be banked through their phone. So then we started targeting mobile phone providers and telcos. And so now I think that in our pipeline, we have probably 50% of the market in India either integrated onto Ripple or in the deal in the sort of pipeline to be signed to India. And guess what? We're going to take that back to Wells Fargo. We're going to say there's no better way to send into India than Ripple. Because again, it's about network effects. And if we can do that in India, we can do that in Brazil, we can do that in all the emerging markets, and I think it's going to be really hard. I mean, we won't take no for an answer, and we're going to continue to build the network until it's so valuable that there's no choice for Wells Fargo to join. And that's, that's 2018. So are we at 80% now of what will be the third largest economy in the world by 2030 in the next six years? Clarity, legislative, regulatory clarity on the national level and on the global level is going to set this thing off. Major private Indian bank partners with Ripple and cross-border remittances. Just showing you the links are there, right? Just showing you. So guys, I thought that was a great video and there's not much I really have to comment on there because it was explained super well. But the one thing I'll say is that the United States was never going to be the first people to adopt the new rails of our financial system. The United States already has fast and efficient payment systems. Now, are they perfect? Are they outdated? Yes, they're outdated and they're certainly not perfect, but they're good enough. But other places around the world like India, they are severely underdeveloped. And rather than building the current rails we have in the United States, right, they're going to skip that step. They're going to go straight to the blockchain rails. They're going to go straight to the next generation financial system products because there's no sense in them building this legacy outdated architecture when they could just jump to the space age stuff. Guys, the newer, less developed countries are going to be the first ones to adopt blockchain technology, and it's going to bring their financial services sector into the next generation financial system. Eventually, the United States is going to have to catch up, but they are not as incentivized to do it. These small developing countries 
countries need it bad. They desperately need these new technologies. The United States, right? We can kind of scrape along with our current system. It's not perfect, but it works. These other places straight up don't have a system. So they're going to adopt blockchain technologies at a ma- They are going to adopt blockchain technologies at a must- so they are going to adopt blockchain technologies at a much faster rate, but eventually the United States is going to get. So they are going to adopt blockchain technologies at a much faster rate, but ultimately the United States is going to capitulate. And I think we already see that happening. The other day, Ripple said that they are going to start expanding into the United States. Guys, I think we're slowly getting to that point where the United States is realizing that if they don't get on the boat in terms of blockchain technologies, they are going to let be left behind. The United States is the leader of the current financial system. They want to lead the next one as well. Guys, it seems like everything is playing out perfectly, just like we thought it would, just like we imagined. Things took longer than expected, but the important thing to note is, is we are right in the middle of it right now. And I want to finish this video off and just show you this very interesting quote from actually an article breaking down Ripple's products. I think this is really interesting and kind of goes to some of the speculation around whether or not XRP will increase in terms of Ripple getting more expansion of their ODL rails. The XRP token cannot be mined and its quantity will constantly decrease. And everything that exists in limited amount and is actively being used is becoming more expensive. Therefore, the, therefore with the growth of the network, the XRP price will increase significantly that was observed in 2018. Guys, I could not agree with this more. The more Ripple lays down the rails, the more Ripple can connect institutions via their on-demand liquidity product, the more institutions that are going to opt into using XRP, the more demand on XRP that will create as supply is constantly decreasing. XRP is a deflationary asset, and Ripple is creating more use cases for XRP day by day. As big institutions all over the world start to turn on their blockchain capabilities, as big institutions institutions start to understand that if they don't adopt this technology, they are going to be left in the dust. They are going to start consuming XRP at a much faster rate. There's only been one company out there working with the traditional firms. There's only been one company out there really going out of their way to bring the old financial system into the new age. That is Ripple. Ripple is the key for the traditional financial system to survive in the next generation system we're going into. Ripple has always been there. It's always been their strategy and it's developing right before our eyes. This is going to create immense demand on XRP while the supply is decreasing and we all know what happens from there. Anyway guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much and for now, make a loud.